My name is Christina Morris. Maybe if people know that you're starting. Oh, okay. I let everybody know I'm starting. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, um, I'll just catch some more. Yeah. So, my name is Christina Morris, and I am a planner with the city of Victoria. And I've been one of the five people working um, on the official community plan update over the last two years. And what I'd like to do just over the next 10 minutes is give you a very um, brief overview of the official community plan, what it is, and also some of the major themes that are in it. And um, provide a little bit more information about how you can provide um, comments to City Council if you're interested. Um, and just as a show of hands, how many of you have been involved in something to do with the official community plan over the last two years, whether it's a meeting or read an article or website? Okay. Okay. Um, so the purpose of an official community plan, this is something that every municipality in BC has to prepare um, by law, and it directs growth and change in the city. Um, it also provides guidance to um, developers, to city council, to um, staff, and also to community organizations. And it responds proactively to issues that we can anticipate emerging in our community over the next 30 years. Um, the official community plan, or the OCP as it's called for short, um, has really been um, the culmination of the largest public engagement process the city of Victoria has ever, ever undertaken. And at last count, it was over 6,000 people have been engaged over the last um, two years. And that's everything from um, meetings at coffee shops to workshops to presentations to community associations. We've engaged with the song he is in Esquimalt First Nations with Vic High. Really um, tried to go and reach people who wouldn't normally be involved in city processes at all. Um, and all of this feedback and these ideas and the, the answers to the question of what would you like Victoria to look like over the next 30 years um, were all put into a draft official community plan which was released this time last year. And it was released for two or three months and we received all sorts of feedback on it, written submissions, um, we had an open house right here in Oakland, and, and, and the summary of all of that feedback is 400 pages long. So you can get a sense of how, um, how many thoughtful ideas and comments and suggestions there were. And so we um, went back and carefully reviewed everything we heard and made changes, um, or considered the changes, in some cases changes were made, in some cases things remain the same. We changed maps, we changed graphics, we added new policies. There's a summary on the table of a, a quite a big um, document, yes, that one, that summarizes what we heard and some of the major, the rationale for some of the changes that were made. And um, and so what all of this has resulted in is the, official, the proposed official community plan, which will be presented um, to council for, um, or has been presented to council on April 5th. Um, second reading happened today. You, we still need to go through a third reading of the official community plan and a public hearing, which will happen on June the 27th. And um, official community plans, unlike many other city plans, are actually adopted by bylaw, so they have legal status. So this is, this is very different than, say, a pedestrian master plan or a parks master plan. So um, what I'd like to do right now is just run through some of the major themes in the official community plan. And um, official community plans at their heart are really about land use and transportation. And um, this one is no different. Um, however, where many OCPs stop at, at the use and the density that's projected for a community, we've also gone further where we talk about the place character, what a place will look like, will feel like. Um, and the built form. There's even guidance down to what um, the street trees and, and what the feel of a place will be. Um, one of the big themes that runs through the official community plan is it um, identifies areas of growth and change. And so you can see this red area, which is the urban core, is projected to have 50% um, of the population growth. And when you think population growth over the next 30 years is projected to be about 20,000 people total for Victoria. So 50% of that will happen in the downtown core. 40% um, of that will happen in these town centers or large urban villages, the purple, um, or within close walking distance of those areas. And then within the remainder of the city, that kind of creamy gray colored, um, that's just 10% of the population growth. 
A real theme that ran throughout the public engagement and now runs throughout the plan is this idea of walkable villages and town centers. People wanted places where they could have the shops, the services, the facilities um, within easy walking. And on the other side of that is also needing the residential density to support those businesses so that they can, they can succeed and be viable. Um, the official community plan also um, strives to keep downtown as the heart of the region, not just the economic heart of the region, but also the social and cultural heart of the region. Um, a diversity of housing, um, both within neighborhoods and also across the city. And there's quite a lot of, um, there's quite a lot of um, direction and policies that have to do with housing and homelessness as well. Sustainable transportation, the OCP is very um, clear about um, almost a hierarchy of pedestrians, cyclists, and public transit and private vehicles in terms of that kind of hierarchy really guiding our approach to planning for transportation over the next 30 years. And that's everything from a greenway system that becomes really world class where we, we know that we're on a greenway system to integrating that with public transit, rapid transit down Douglas Street. A more resilient city. This is something that's new um, in Victoria's plan. It's actually, um, some of these topics are a bit unique for any OCPs. Um, the, the, um, we have a chapter on climate change and energy. We have a chapter on food systems and also one on emergency management, which we understand is the only municipality in BC to have a chapter on emergency management. Adaptive management is another theme in the official community plan, and this is the idea that the, this official community plan doesn't just sit on a shelf, that it's regularly reviewed and updated, that we check in to see how we're doing, that there's monitoring and evaluation. And in some cases, we don't know what the right way is to proceed, that, but that maybe we can, um, uh, in a sense, set up things like experiments to kind of see, is this the right approach? Is this the right type of housing? Let's try it out check back in, see if it's working. If it's not working, maybe let's try something else. But if it is working, you know, maybe that was a good pilot project. So um, trying to be a bit more adaptive to new situations and uncertainty. The idea of character areas and sense of place um, was a theme that we heard loud and clear from the community that the neighborhoods and this identity of being in Victoria is really important, whether it's the natural environment or the feeling that you get in these different unique neighborhoods. And um, so the OCP has an entire chapter on placemaking, which combines urban design and heritage. And one of the biggest tools that, or one of the tools that's used um, to help reinforce the sense of place um, is development permit areas and heritage conservation areas. And for anyone who saw the draft last year, this is a section that wasn't included in it because it wasn't prepared at that time. So I'd encourage you, if, um, if you're interested, there's some copies of the OCP. And what these are are basically areas where there's a bit more control over um, the form and the character, so the design of buildings. Um, and uh, most of the development permit areas and heritage conservation areas are essentially the same as what's already in our last OCP, which is from 1995. Um, there's been a couple changes to bring them into line with, you know, for example, where the urban villages are. But, but in terms of the actual boundaries of them, they're the same, but there is one notable exception to that. And that's a new one called um, Development Permit Area 16, which actually applies to um, any properties that have um, about three units or more um, that are industrial or commercial um, all over the city if they're, sorry, I'm explaining this wrong. If they're not currently in a development permit area and it's a property that has um, three units or more um, industrial or commercial zoning, um, then there would now be a development permit area for the whole city. And, and that would mean there's some extra steps to go in to make sure that there's um, some design, input on design um, for those. And what that's trying to do is where you might have um, you know, a, a small apartment building, for example, that might go in in an area that's kind of a traditional residential neighborhood, it would just provide a bit more um, oversight to make sure that it fits into the neighborhood and that there's, um, there's just an opportunity for input. It doesn't take away the, um, the opportunity, it doesn't have anything to do with the zoning, the development's still allowed to happen if it's approved, but it's, um, it's just looking at the design and how it fits in. Um, so, 
Local area plans, one of the things that we were asked to do um, in preparing this official community plan was to develop a new um, approach to local area planning. And one of the things that came out loud and clear was to focus planning where planning is needed. So not necessarily to do as we've done in the past, which was to do an entire neighborhood plan. It was if the only area that was expecting growth and change and that really needed planning attention was Cook Street Village, for example, well, to focus just on Cook Street Village rather than doing the entire neighborhood. Um, but in some cases, that could be a very small study area. In some cases, the entire neighborhood is actually an area of growth and change. And so um, they're strategically focused. The scale will change and be considered at the beginning of each of these local area planning processes just to see how big and small it is. Um, and this map, which you can see more clearly on the second board there, identifies which areas of the city are the priorities for local area plans, um, the first one being um, along the Douglas Street corridor and, and generally 800 meters on either side of that, and then um, different neighborhood centers and some of the other corridors um, as well. So um, the next step um, in the official community plan um, adoption, which is the phase we're in right now, is a public hearing that's happening on Wednesday, June the 27th at 7.30 at City Hall. And um, there's a couple of ways to provide feedback. So unlike previous phases of the OCP where we as staff would take your comments and, and see um, how we could incorporate them, at this stage all comments go to City Council for their consideration. And you can provide your feedback in one of three ways. You can show up at the public hearing and speak directly to Council. You can um, provide a written submission either by email or by mail, and um, the information sheets that you received on the way in provide the addresses. Um, we ask that you um, provide written submissions by, um, I believe it's 11 a.m. the day before, so the 26th of June, um, just to make sure that they, because all of these are photocopied and handed out to each councillor for the public hearing, so they're in the public record. Um, so if anybody, if all of the information, including copies of the OCP and all the chapters and how we got here are available on the website, and um, myself, Mark, and Cam, who are all here from the city, will be happy to answer your questions, and um, thank you very much. And I should say, does anybody have any questions now, or you're welcome to do it one-on-one? -on -one? Kind of peeking into the future past June 27th, what are the next steps after oh, that? Oh, okay. So the next step, um, one of the things, one of the first orders of business will be to come up with an implementation plan. Because the official community plan has lots of, you know, big policies, but, um, you know, for example, prepare a parks master plan, that will. And so the implementation plan will, what are the concrete actions that need to be done, which departments will do them, what's the timeline. Um, and um, so that's really the next order of business. And then, um, you know, we're all quite excited to get started on the local area planning process as well, which, which once the implementation plan um, uh, is done, is one of the key orders of business. Was there a timeline set out for when the implementation would go to a certain phase or um, percentage of completion or whatever, or is that all to still come? Um, some of the projects we know already because they rely on other um, departments, for example, the Parks Master Plan, the Parks Department kind of has, um, um, and, um, but some of them we still have to have those discussions and it's really about priority setting because there are some very big projects that need to happen in order to implement these, including an entire local area planning program. Um, and so those will be some of the discussions that will go hand in hand with creating the implementation plan over the, the summer and fall. So that's the next step. The, the city has a number of public lands that are, you know, the government precinct where there's some lands yes. that are being considered for what's their future development. And I wasn't clear in the plan if there's a policy around public ownership or, or public benefit use of some of those areas mm -hmm. versus uh, development. Because the sale by public to private right. is an important uh, policy issue, yeah. and I, I couldn't figure out in the plan 
what the city's approach to that is over the going forward. Right, and if you're talking about the city-owned land or just city provincial, owned land. or city, yeah, right, city-owned land, um, the land that the city has control over us as a right, public entity. Right, right. Um, Cam, do you want to speak to that? I mean, my sense is. Sure. Um, I, 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 and Cam knows where. Yeah. From. Yeah, yeah. Firstly, we, we don't we don't necessarily speak directly to a policy on uh, city ownership of land. I think there's some other interesting things in terms of broadly public land, for example, with the uh, school lands. We have policies on, on on how they should be treated, and if, if for some reason the school board wants to shut down a school, we have clear direction that they should be maintained as community facilities. So for some of those things, we do have, we do have policy directions, but in terms of uh, city lands in particular and a policy on that, we don't have something directly in the... That, that is another scenario. I mean, there are a number of scenarios where public land becomes accessible and may be of interest to private and I think uh, one of the key things is I think a lot of that critical public land um, in order to do anything substantially different from what's there right now a lot of that would require rezoning so the city would have the capacity to to influence that and through the rezoning process um, so feel free to, to wander and ask any of us questions if you'd like and of course help yourselves to uh, questions